So you wanna get in on all the PC building fun and all those pesky YouTubers like me are telling you how easy this is, but it sure seems pretty confusing and downright frustrating at times. Now, whether or not you're a first time PC builder or you're just coming back onto the scene after a long hiatus, don't worry, I've got five quick tips that are gonna help you get back into PC building awesomeness coming right up. Welcome back PC Builders, I'm Jason. In particular, I wanna welcome all of our new builders and I wanna welcome back all the builders who haven't done a build in quite a while. About a year before I started this channel, I was just getting back into the PC building space myself. I'd had kind of a long layoff, I had moved, and I know firsthand, while yes, it is probably easier now than it ever has been to put together a PC build, if you don't know the graphics cards and you don't know the current CPUs and you don't know the motherboard chipsets and you don't know the current stock of coolers and you're not sure how to, how to connect what with what, it can be really, really frustrating and, 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 and honestly make you feel like you wanna pull your hair out. So today, I'm gonna give you five top tips to get you into PC building shape and head you on the road to get the best price or performance in your build. That's what this channel is all about. We work to condense all the technical details down so that you just get the information you need to get that best price to performance. If that's content that you want and wanna see more of, remember to subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified when we go live it's an absolutely free way to support the channel and get the content that you need for your PC build. With that, let's jump into tip number one. So tip number one is a tool that I use all the time and that's PC Part Picker at PCPartPicker.com. This is an amazing tool. It's gonna to help guide you through the building process and avoid things like incompatibilities, graphics cards that won't fit in your PC case, uh, getting the wrong motherboard with your CPU and a lot more. Now, back when the channel just started out, I did a build where I showed folks how to use PC Part Picker in a lot of detail. And while the build in that video really isn't relevant anymore as a lot of the parts aren't just available, I do walk you step by step through how to use each component of PC Part Picker. So I'm gonna put a link up in the card above to that video. I do wanna highlight a couple of things for you though right now in this tips video. So the great thing, if we go to System Builder over here, you can see PC Part Picker is gonna allow you to put in each component. And as you put in each component, it's gonna to check to see if uh, these are compatible components. You can put in filters in here if you're only looking for a certain kind of memory, for instance. Just a really, really great tool. The other thing that PC Part Picker does really well is it's gonna show you just the best deals on all of these parts. Um, so for instance, if you're looking for a deep cool Gamex 400 or any kind of CPU cooler, I actually have a whole bunch here in what's called a, a parametric selection. So I've selected a lot from the coolers here that I, I would buy any of these. Uh, I find think that they're all effectively interchangeable. So it's just gonna show me the one that's got the cheapest price right now. It's a really useful tool, especially with regard to memory. Um, I use this all the time. Really, really fantastic tool, PCPartPicker.com. You really should not be putting a build together without putting it in PC Part Picker, especially because that's how us folks in the building community usually talk to each other about our builds. We send a PC Part Picker list um, link and or post it uh, in a form or whatever, and, and other people can check it out. Tip number two is to focus on getting really good stock performance out of your build without sweating things like overclocking or high-end memory tuning. So I see this all the time. Too many first time and returning builders get completely bogged down worrying about whether they're gonna be able to overclock or super tune their memory. Overclocking and memory tuning at the beginner level just isn't gonna net you much more than maybe about 10% of your performance. So rather than spending all of your time worrying about that, I recommend that you focus instead on just getting really good stock performance. So for instance, I see people say things all the time, like, you know, for memory, you need to make sure you're getting Samsung B dies. That's insanely hard for beginners to figure out how to do, or even returning builders to do. And for the tiny performance distance, uh, difference, 
it takes away a lot of their focus from just really important things in the build, really important decisions to make. So don't let that overclocked perfect, you know, perfection be the enemy of an assembled stock goodness, right? You rather build something that is awesome at stock than get stuck trying to figure out how to massively overclock something that you don't even know how to overclock. Tip number three is not overspending on components that don't help performance. This has got to be the most devastating thing to do to your PC budget. Now, most of us human beings start off with a rough idea of how much we can spend overall on the PC. That number may go up a little bit, may go down a little bit, but we're generally pegged to an approximate number out there. Now, the smaller that number, the more important it is to maximize the performance you get out of each and every dollar. This is price to performance. Yet, I constantly see people way overspending on components that, yes, of course, they, you need to have a motherboard, you need to have a power supply, but above and beyond a certain level, they have almost no impact on performance. Uh, for instance, in my recent best motherboards for Ryzen 5000 video, I explained why B550 boards were all that almost anybody needs, especially gamers. Yeah, I still see so many gamers they claim to be on a mid-range budget and they're buying very expensive X570 motherboards. Let me give you an example here. I actually wanted to use the X570 Tomahawk, but it's totally sold out. I wanted to use the Meg Ace, that's totally sold out. Uh, almost proving my point. So let's use the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Master. Fantastic motherboard, don't get me wrong. But if you're gonna stick a Ryzen 3600 on this thing, you're out of your mind. This is a $360 motherboard. Um, the Tomahawk, even though, at least in the U.S., I know in other regions it sells for about its MSRP, which is a, a good price, but in the U.S., that board sells for like $80 to $100 over MSRP most of the time when it's in stock. You could just as easily get a fantastic little motherboard like the ASRock B550M Pro 4 for 100 bucks that would do the same thing. So that is, gosh, what is that, $260 that you're throwing down the drain basically to get a real a motherboard that hey it looks cool the audio is going to be a little bit better on it but you could have plowed that into a much much better graphics card gotten a much higher fps heck you could have invested that in a much better monitor so that you could get a better graphics card there's a lot of other places that you can invest that money to get more fps and a better gaming experience overall okay tip number four here this is going to be really controversial but it absolutely needs to be said Stop paying money or making decisions around this concept of an upgrade path. Most PC builders probably build a PC every three to five years. The only components you're gonna be able to realistically upgrade is the graphics card. That's the easiest one to do, possibly the memory. There is no other component that you can spend extra money on right now that won't be largely obsolete in that time frame. So stop worrying about getting a good enough motherboard to maybe someday run a Ryzen, you know, 16 core Ryzen 3950X if you're only putting together a build with a four core, eight thread Ryzen 3100. The hard truth that nobody says is that the used PC components market, especially CPUs, they're almost all as expensive now, if not more so than when they were sold brand new. And they're certainly never going to be cost competitive against the current generation of components, unless something completely changes in the market that hasn't happened in five to 10 years. So stop worrying about an upgrade path and just focus on getting the best PC you can buy right now. Okay, so tip number five. This is probably the absolutely most important one. Get feedback from experienced and current PC builders before you buy anything. Yes, watching YouTube videos is great. Yes, learning all this stuff for yourself is great, but you don't have to do it alone, and I wouldn't recommend doing it alone. There's a whole community out there. Connect to the community, connect to some of us. So for instance, PC Part Picker has forums specifically for people to post their parts list. Here's, um, we're in their forums, right? We're gonna go to part, you can either post an existing part list, or you can just say, hey, you can come over here to create one for me. Um, I don't know, I'm looking for a $800 to $1,000 uh, build. Here's what I need. And then people will help you out. 
Now remember, these are all internet strangers. Some of the folks who post in these uh, forums don't know what they're doing either, and they'll just throw together a post. So make sure you get some feedback on this. Maybe take this post, go over to Linus Tech Tips forums in the new builds and planning. Take that and then post it over here and see what you get. Um, we'll do one, here's a $2,500 PC. Here's someone doing exactly this. This is, hey, this is what I was thinking. What do you guys think of this? And then people give them feedback. Hey, I'd change this, I'd change that. This is a really great way to kind of socialize your build and make sure that you're getting enough really good feedback uh, from it. Here's someone who's recommending an MSI X570 Tomahawk and I want to I want to hit somebody because <laughs> you don't need an X570. These are the kinds of things that I would recommend taking a look at in order to connect to the larger building community. Don't just do it all in your head and get the best price to performance for your builds. I hope this really helps you think about your next PC build and gives you the resources that you need and kind of a conceptual understanding to really tackle this thing. If you got value out of this video, please absolutely give it a like. It tells YouTube this is good content to share with other people. And of course, if you're new to the channel, remember to subscribe and click the bell icon so you get notified when we go live with new content. It's a great way for you to support the channel for absolutely for free and for you to get the content. So thank you so much for watching. Good luck on your PC building adventures and I'll catch you on the next one.